Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Metropolis Radio. Today, we are going to be taking at some news that just came out of uh, AFM. For those that don't know, that is the American film market. And as of the recording and uploading of this video, uh, AFM is still an ongoing event. So there could be a lot more news coming out that we just haven't heard yet. So uh, stay tuned, potentially, if there's anything even worth discussing. But as the title suggests... Uh, um, the Boondock Saints 3 is finally happening with this article here coming from Deadline. Uh, Norman Reedus, Sean Patrick Flannery, and director Troy Duffy reunite for the Boondock Saints 3, news coming out of AFM, and this is an exclusive to Deadline. Uh, the Boondock Saints are back. Director Troy Duffy has reunited with Norman Reedus and Sean Patrick Flannery for, the Boondock, for Boondock Saints 3, a new installment of the saga of fraternal twin Irish brothers Connor and Murphy McManus who go on a vig who go on a vigilante track. And Boondock Saints 3 is probably only happening now because if I'm not mistaken, the final season of The Walking Dead either, like, I think it just wrapped production. So there's nothing holding um, holding Norman Reedus back from doing the from doing the third movie, which I think is the reason why we haven't seen a Boondock Saints why we haven't seen a Boondock Saints movie since 2009. Um, that starts after they dispatch two Russian mobsters in self defense and then have an epiphany to rid their Boston hometown of all crime while being hunted by by an FBI agent Willem Dafoe, uh, who can't help but admire their cause. That was the first movie. Um, Impossible Dream Entertainment partner Sean Reddick of uh, Get Out and Black Klansman and Yvette Yates and, and Yvette Yates Reddick are producing the package with Don, with Don Carmody of Goodwill Hunting and Duffy. Uh, Latter wrote the script for the film with Flannery with a lot of input from Reedus. The film will shoot next May, May of 2022, for those of you watching this in the future. When Flannery has completed his work on the series The Boys and Reedus is, free, is freed up from The Walking Dead. Okay. Okay, see that I didn't know, but I, I haven't. But I, I'm not really, wa I'm not really watching the boys, so I wouldn't have known that. Um, financing is Todd Myers' Dragonfly Films, and the exchange will broker worldwide sales of the virtual American film market. Reedus and Flannery are executive producing along with Nat McCormick of the Exchange and Todd Myers of Dragonfly Films. Quote: The fans have loved these characters for 20 years. Duffy said they use terms of endearment like the brothers or the boys. Uh, we left them in jail at the end of Boondocks 2, and fans want to know what happened to them. Norman and Sean have been have been a driving force to keep this franchise on track and break some new ground and break some new ground story wise. The fans have been waiting. They literally ask about it daily, and I'm really excited to be working with, with Impossible Dream to make Boondock to make Boondocks 3 a reality. End quote. Uh, said Sean Reddick. Uh, quote. It's easy to see. It's easy to see how the how this franchise has attracted and maintained its strong cult following. All these years when you dig into the mythology and execution of the storytelling, Troy, Norman, and Sean have skillfully architected a killer story that fans will go crazy for, just as Yvette and I have. Uh, we love and appreciate that Boondock Saints has such a rabid fan base that is starving for anything and everything that builds on the franchise. Uh, we see fan tattoo, we see fans tattoo the characters, sayings, and prayer on their bodies. They engage in digital and social media, and they travel enormous distances to meet and engage with the creators and stars of the films and comics. All this makes us excited to get to work with the team and deliver something distinct and special. Uh, Yvette, Yvette Yates Reddick added that quote. Regardless of whether or not someone has seen the first two films, Saints 3 will blow them away. Moreover, this is a proud comeback moment for Troy, a storyteller who has demonstrated humility and resilience in the face of adversity and emerged more focused and determined than ever to continue the Boondock Saints story. We're proud to back him and his authentic vision for the franchise, end quote. And I remember reading this like years ago, and I don't remember where I read it. But initially, Troy Duffy had a distribution deal with Universal for the Boondock Saints, but then he had kind of like overplayed his hand and Universal like nicked the deal. And that's why um, the Boondock Saints had to be distributed independently. I believe it was actually Blockbuster that uh, that picked up the rights to the movie. Um, bum, 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 bum. Oops, scroll a little too far. Here we go. Uh, the hope is is grow a rabid fan a rabid fan base and turn the Saints into a John Wick type global action franchise. It is the latest twist in the saga of Duffy and the Saints, a crazy ride that has more ups and downs than an EKG. 
Duffy was a bartender slash musician who, tired of watching bad action films, tried to write a good one. It made the Hollywood rounds, and suddenly this rowdy sud slinger at Jay Sloan saw saw the bar filled with studio execs trying to make a deal. He chose an offer for he chose an offer from Harvey Weinstein at Miramax that that was to give him title to the watering hole in addition to a fat check. Duffy never got the bar as Weinstein lost interest when he couldn't land the stars he wanted. Duffy prevailed in getting the film made, only to find himself in the awkward position of showing it to studios right after the murders at Columbine High in Colorado. Uh, the Boondock Saints did, did paltry box office, then went on to become wildly profitable in its ancillary run. It continues to have a strong following, which its makers hope bodes well toward growing the franchise. Now that there will be enough money to spend, there will be enough money to make the second sequel on a grander scale. And I and I did and I did and I did forget I did forget about that. Yeah, I think um, yeah, I think yeah, it was suppressed due to due to Columbine. Yeah, Columbine just ruined fucking everything. Apparently, uh, quote. Uh, you never know which films are going to hit or what kind of or, or what kind of special you got that makes for something people will gravitate toward, Duffy told, told Deadline. Uh, nobody knows. The closest we got to someone knowing happened when we were having the first screens for Boondock Saints at the Sony lot, Paramount lot, Fox lot, and it was right after the Columbine incident. Columbine shut us down. They were pulling they were pulling back on everything violent, especially with youthful violence, even ones that feature trench coats, which the Columbine killers wore, yes. Uh then I'm surprised that that the Matrix uh released, given that they wore trench coats. Um uh but getting getting back to it, uh we got caught right in the middle of that, distraught because everyone had worked so hard. We didn't have anything to do with this tragic thing that happened in Colorado, and we felt there is a real there is a real life and there are movies. What is going on? A buyer told us, hey, you guys have been blacklisted. Nobody is buying your movie to release in theaters right now. And then something and then something prophetic. It was Billy Connolly who came walking out of the theater and he was like mimically mimicking Connolly's Scottish brogue. Fuck it. The kids will find it. It's rock and roll. Uh, he was the only one who was like, it doesn't matter. This is too good. It's going places. All of us didn't know except Billy. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Uh, I've seen people with perfect projects that just sail through all the processes and turn into terrible films, he said, referring to Troy Duffy. Uh, and then ones that are super difficult, nothing but stress and horror from the first second, and they make great ones. Uh, films like Precious, where everyone comes down and sacrifices so much and their paychecks go out the window and they don't care. Those ones are magic. Uh, you see so much in this business, you never know what's going to hit, but we did. And why change the sausage now? So, so here comes three. Even the third film was turbulent as Flannery in 2017 tweeted that he and Reedus were no longer involved in Boondocks in Boondock 3 because of disagreements. But Flannery was in many ways the driving force in getting done the current draft, Duffy said. And whatever differences they had, they, they had have been patched. In Boondock Saints 2 All Saints Day, the brothers end the film behind bars for their vigilante crimes. The third film picks up from there. Uh, which is going to be quite interesting. Are they going to pick up immediately where Boondock Saints 3 left off? Or are they going to start from maybe when they leave the prison? I would think with a 10, 11... Actually, no, this would be more of a of a 12 or... A potential 12 or 13 year time jump. It's probably going to start from right when they leave the prison. Um, quote, uh, uh, where we're going is the brothers are older, Duffy said. They are coming out into a brand new world that is not like the one they left. Okay, so that's alluding to that it's going to start from them leaving prison. Uh, they are at odds. Uh, one wants to continue, the other doesn't. There's a new enemy out there, not like the traditional ones they faced. That's the thing that is timely about this one. I asked the fan base once, who would you most like Who would you most like to see Connor and Murphy kill? There were like 4,500 answers and some were biblical. People just don't give you one word answers. The number one answer was politicians. And I, I, could, I could see that. Um, I wrote a scene right now where, where one of them says, are you fucking kidding? You can't kill a politician. And the other saying, are you kidding me? Uh, they're the ones, do they're the ones doing it. It turns out one guy is do is doing it much worse than everyone else without getting too deep into the story. What, what it, it, what it is, is two boys coming out of prison after staying there much longer than expected to a brand new world. They're at odds on whether, on whether to push forward, but the type of people we face today in our society is unlike any we faced before. And that brings them together and we cannot, and we cannot turn our backs on this. 
since I hooked up with Red and Yvette, they've proven they've proven to be some of the best in the business, he said. Boondock has always has always had a hard independent road. You try to get the best people in the area you're shooting in, and there are things you just can't you just can't believe that happen on an independent film set where you have to make a decision, get that footage and move on and not cry about it. Uh, Rob, P Rob Peter to pay Paul, move, move, move 100 miles an hour, and you're lucky if you get a, sa a salient story at the end of it. One of the things I've, ne I've never had is the comfort of enough days and the comfort of working with top people. I've got stunt work, gun work here. Uh-oh, that, that's going to be a problem after the, uh, allegedly after, after the Alec Baldwin incident, because, you know, you know, Alec Baldwin wants to now limit, limit, uh, limit, limit guns on, uh, on movie sets now. And, you know, I think we should, we should all take a moment to, to, to realize, real regardless of political opinions, we should all stand behind Alec Baldwin right now. Because we all know that it's ten times more dangerous to be standing in front of him right now. But that's anyway, get, getting back to it. Um, I've got stunt work, gun work here that deserve the attention and care paid by that franchise. One of the things that is really cool for me now is jumping in the pool with these guys who'll say, you know what? Here's what we can do. And that's how and that's how the article ends. Am I excited for the Boondock Saints 3? Um I I'm going to I am very I am cautiously optimistic given that th given that everybody is basically back. You've got Troy Duffy writer director uh Norman Reedus and Sean Patrick Flannery. So at least it has that going for it. And I understand that that a lot of a, a lot of this article is basically a sales pitch, but keep in mind this is this this was made at AFM, the the American film market. Everybody is trying to sell their movie there. So if it sounds like a sales pitch, that's probably why. But um, I want to. I I actually want to. I, I actually want to know, guys. What do you think of the Boondock Saints three? Have you ever even seen the Boondock Saints? Because I know it wasn't available on streaming for a good num a good number of years. So, uh, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you. If you stuck around this long, thanks so much for doing so. And if you've been following me long enough, you know I'm terrible at ending these videos. So I will just see you guys on uh, next time.